Someone near and dear to my heart, one of my favorite characters in the show, our narrator, our giant, our fireman, Mr. Carl Stricken. This man is as sweet as he is scary as hell. 
but he's the most charming man I've ever met. Mr. Ray Wise, Leland Paul. Pick a side, right or left of the red couch. <laughs> and a character so special to us, she is our Laura Palmer, Miss Cheryl Lee. Scary Mr. C and lovable Dougie, Kyle McLaughlin. So all of you together, this is just an amazing event. Um, I want to start things off, and we're going to move quickly, but I want from each and every one of you, this was just an overnight success. And when this was happening, when you guys were just shooting your next gig, and this became what it had become fast, uh, in your lives watching that happen, what was that experience like for you just as it was happening? Did you gather with friends and watch along with everybody else? Had you already seen uh, ahead of air, um, what was your experience for each person uh, as the show just grew? Uh, well, I, I was already a big fan, uh, and I don't think I've ever been as nervous uh, coming on the set as I was for Twin Peaks. And it was also the first time I met David Lynch, uh, because I had only seen the casting director. And he walked up to me and shook my hand and said, everything is going to be peachy keen. <laughs> that was the first time I ever heard the expression.
That shit was probably at Ikea, so... <laughs> well, I came in in second season, and uh, I was completely obsessed with the show, and so intimidated. I was so excited when I got the audition, and um, the women were the most beautiful women I'd ever seen on the show, and I was like, how am I going to get out of this? And it was written that she was supposed to be so beautiful, and the, the men were just falling at her feet, and I'm like, how am I going to get on the show? So I decided to make on a Southern. It wasn't written that way. And, um, and I thought, well, it's going to work or it's not. And it worked. And I was so excited. And it was an absolute dream come true. I just couldn't believe I was a part of this incredible show. And, and um, yeah, I, just, I, I got on the show and I thought, oh, right, this is going to be, this is going to last forever. I can't believe I'm part of this incredible. And then it was, I, I got on and then it ended. <laughs> I think I was first. <laughs> and then Ray and I have worked together so many times, it's been so great. Like, anyway. Um, I, I got a call from my agent, that, you know, and, and sent this script over called Northwest Passage. And uh, I read it through and I liked it a lot. And uh, I, they set me up in a meeting with, uh, with David Lynch. and. Uh, so I went into the meeting with David thinking I was going to maybe read for the sheriff, Sheriff Truman. <laughs> How about that? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was all set to maybe play Sheriff Truman. And then when I found out after our little meeting, we talked about our first cars. With, uh, his was a Volkswagen, I think. And, and, uh, and then, and then, um, a couple of days later, I got the call, and he was interested in me playing Leland Palmer, and I had to go back to the script and look to see who Leland was again. <laughs> and, and, I, and I looked at the first scene, and uh, you know, I find out my daughter's dead, and I start crying, and, and then I go to the morgue and identify her body, and I start crying again. And, <laughs> And then I, I'm in her room when the police are searching for her diary and other things, and I'm crying again on the bed. <laughs> so all this guy does is cry. <laughs> and then, so the light went on in my head, I'm going to have to find different levels of crying, <laughs> of mourning for my dog. And uh, I, had, I had no idea what was to come, believe me. Well, you've, you found all the levels. Yeah. <laughs> One of the great performances. Uh, I'd like to see that audition tape. That would be sort of fun. <laughs> <laughs> we would all have those if we all auditioned for other characters. What might that be like? That could be fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, um, uh, David spoke to me about the script. And you're right, it was called Northwest Passage initially, originally. And he had written it with Mark Frost. And I think in the beginning I was David's guy for Cooper. I think it was, that was going to be it, um, kind of unspoken. And then, but Mark was the was a wild card in it. And so I had to have a uh, had lunch with Mark so he could meet me actually, and just he, so he could be on board with the idea of me playing Dale Cooper. So we went to the Border Grill in Los Angeles, um, sat down, had a very nice lunch and uh, I guess I convinced him because uh, the next day well, we were all systems go. So uh, that's how I, how I came aboard. So, border Grill, Mark Frost lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Dale Cooper, there you go. <laughs> um, I was living in <coughs> Seattle at the time and I just got a call that David was in town and there was this little secret mysterious thing and would I go meet him to um, play a dead girl? <laughs> and so, said, yeah, absolutely. So um, that was it. I just he asked if, if I could be wrapped in plastic and put in cold water and painted gray. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's how it happened. Hi. Um, for me, it just was 
another audition, but only with a genius this time. Um, and making a long story short, somebody had said to me as a new young actress, when you go meet directors, be yourself. Don't think that you have to put on a show or behave a certain way. If you're kind of bitchy or you have a sense of humor, they've all heard this boring story. So whoever you are, be that person. Well, I was kind of shy when I first met people, and then it's David Lynch. I'm like, do I do this, you know? <laughs> and so I was myself, and he just talked a lot and asked a lot of questions. And I want you to hold it. Oh, you go, sweet pea. <laughs> and, um, and then, so I left, and I thought it went okay. The casting director yelled at my manager and said I should have been more positive. <laughs> like, well, that didn't work. Um, and they called a week later and said he's writing a new role. And so there was this, this little role that I was so grateful to get, like, beyond. And then I fell in love with Special Agent. Audrey fell in love with Special Agent. Okay. <laughs> I cried my eyes out when I saw him a few days ago. Where is it? Um, so I was uh, new to Hollywood. I was only 17, 18, 17. Uh, and I was filming the pilot to Baywatch. <laughs> and uh, I was supposed to go down. I had gone in for Joanna Ray, our incredible casting director, a bunch of times on a bunch of different stuff. And she's very particular who she takes uh, to David. And um, so I was supposed to go down and, and meet David. And I only knew David from Blue Velvet and this very strange film, Dune. <laughs> Um, but I so uh, and I was super late on set and I was super worried that I wasn't gonna make it but they waited and I read with Eric uh, Joanna's son and um, I read for Lara Flynn Boyle's part Donna and um, and we read and it was great but sort of like at the end of the meeting David just said do you want to do a TV show with me and I was like And you know that's that's history. It's and we, I think one of the questions too was like, did you were you aware of it as it was happening? As it was happening, how was that experience? And I wasn't. I wasn't at all. Like I watched with friends at home and you know talked to my family and stuff. But it wasn't until like the trip to New York for Upfronts that it was all of a sudden like an entire Manhattan was just surrounding us. We're just like whoa. Uh, and then, and then the invitation for um, uh, Phil Donahue, and I was like, "Oh, we made it!" <laughs> <laughs> well, I think when we came around, we knew what big of a deal it was. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, they didn't tell me what I was auditioning for, but they did say it was a Showtime revival. So uh, I'm a massive Twin Peaks fan, and I did know Showtime was doing a Twin Peaks revival. So I thought, just in case that's what it is, I'll wear my, what I call my Laura Palmer sweater. And make sure to mention I'm from the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> and uh, it worked, so. <laughs> Thanks so much for inviting me along with all these amazing original cast members. It's a real honor. Um, how I ended up getting involved was ages ago, over a decade ago, I was living in London and my agent called me to say, this casting director Joanna Ray is in town and she's requested to meet you. So I looked up her resume and I'm like, how? Like, how has she heard of me? So I go in and, and she says all these really wonderful things. She's like, I've got this star beside your name and I've wanted to meet you for a very long time and I'm finally in London. And I said, are you sure you got the right person? <laughs> Why? But it turns out that she um, had seen the screen test I did for Randall Wallace which the film never went. And uh, she said, Amy, if you ever come to LA, I'd really love to introduce you to David. I just think you're perfect to, to collaborate with him on something. So then I moved to, to LA some years later and I called her up and I was like, hey Joe, I'm here. <laughs> and she looked after me. Um, and then I met David and kind of came about. But as you were saying, the second part of the question, did I know it was gonna change anything? Well. I don't really come into it until episode 10, and I had no idea what episodes I was going to be in, and I was mortified because I had done a bunch
bunch of press about working with him. And every week I was watching it with my two pals going, oh my god, I'm not in this show, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed, I'm so embarrassed. Um, and then I, I remember the first episode that I properly in, I think it's 10 or 11, I decided just not to watch it. <laughs> I was in London and I woke up to my phone exploding and oh, I'm one of the other cast members had sent me a photo of me walking into the office and I thought, oh my god, oh my god. At least my mom will be happy now. <laughs> Um, my experience is similar to Giselle's, where I got the audition, and instead of reading anything, the audition was, tell me about yourself, which at the time I'd never heard of, but <laughs> now, now I go, oh, I see, because David Lynch doesn't actually cast actors, he casts people, he wants to see how you talk, how your face moves, he's really specific. And when I got to set, it was the most surreal experience. It's six years later, and it's still the most surreal experience. And I feel so grateful to be up here with all these people that I look up to. And I love these two girls. <laughs> Effective characters in the show is, is the music by Angela Vidalmenti, and my question for anyone that wants to answer is: during this scene or during the shooting of the show, before takes, did David, especially, uh, um, hold on, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god, something um, But Sherilyn, especially, uh, I know every time we see Audrey, there's a theme and a rhythm to the scene, and. Uh, did David play any of the music on set? Was any of it pre-composed, not during the take, but for just kind of uh, to, to get people to kind of get in that sort of mood? Uh, did Angelo or David play anything uh, before takes? And he, he didn't, except when he, in the second episode, he rewrote that whole scene in the coffee shop. And then say, then you're gonna dance at the end, and I was like, why? <laughs> like I'm just gonna get up and start dancing. And they said, because we wrote you a song and it's Audrey's theme, and you're just gonna groove and you're gonna love it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> this day, I actually called my teacher. I was so nervous because, like, you know, you come all prepared. I'm like, what do I do? He's like, listen to David Lynch. Okay, <laughs> just listen and do what he says. Yeah, the, the music's so iconic, and I know Dana. Uh, Turn when you first walk in, you know, as Deputy Bobby Briggs, and, uh, and all of us are surprised because uh, you know Bobby killed a guy. But anyway, you go, <laughs> and when you see uh, Laura's picture and you start to cry, uh, I don't, I'm assuming all of us in the room felt this. I mean, that was a, a punch in that uh, your reaction. Did David just kind of cry, or was it more of just did it hit you personally as, wow, we're back on this show, it's been 25 um, years? written that way, I have said this, I just told a bunch of people today at <laughs> my table, but it's just written that way, it was like Bobby walks into the office, he sees a picture of Laura Palmer on the table, and Bobby cries, and that was it, and I just, just had to try and not mess it up. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> Kyle, in the return, uh, this had to be a wonderful actor's playground for you tackling the three very different uh, roles in the show. How exciting was this to not only come back to the show, but then go, oh, David, you, you have me doing everything under the sun in this, in this room. Exciting. Uh, <laughs> How much pressure? <laughs> frightening, scary. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a gift that David gave to me. Um, and, you know, I've been doing this for a while, and. I feel pretty capable, I can sort of handle anything that comes along, except when I read Mr. C, I said, well, I've never done anything like this, and i got to find this, this person in, in me, you know, it's like, and if I don't find it, if it doesn't, I knew if it didn't work, the show wasn't going to work, so, a <laughs> little pressure, <laughs> but I had an ace in the hole, <clears throat> I was working with David Lynch, so, um, together we, we basically built Mr. C, um, uh, actors will know from the outside in, we actually built him. And, uh, and then that created, of course, an interior life 
um, starting with just his look, with that jacket, and that really just wrong hair. <laughs> that was so perfect. Um, down to the little detail of the pin in the back. I mean, there was, everything was very, very specific and thought through. Um, and then when we added um, a little bit of a kind of a dirt effect on his face, that just sort of sold it for me. I was like, God. When I, when I look at that, I'm like, that's it. And then I, I, we, we added also, I think it was my suggestion, I said, this guy's a shark. And I said, I think that his eyes have got, there's no life there. So yeah. I said, let's put a little um, contact in and just uh, help that. And, uh, and that also sort of moved the character closer to what I wanted. It gives him also an otherworldly kind of quality, which I thought was important. Um, so that was, and that was David and I kind of working together. And then Ducky was just, uh, <laughs> there, was a, I, there was an exercise that I did in school years ago when I was in training, and it was uh, called Object Discovery. And uh, so it's, uh, it's as if you're seeing something for the first time and you, know, you have no idea what it is or what it does. It's like a baby, you're a baby basically. Um, until you sort of, some, something about it attracts, attracts you and you interact with it and that was pretty much Dougie. Um, so it was just finding that every day with David, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then the goal for me was always to try to make him laugh on every take. So whatever I did as Dougie, my goal was to make David break up because of what I was doing. Um, the other thing about Dougie was, was it took a lot of courage, I found, to be so still and to not do anything. Because as actors, we like to do stuff, you know, at least I do. I like to fill the moment. And this is like, eh, no fill in the moment. You just, you're there and people are looking at you and if they're uncomfortable, and you're this is the way it goes. <laughs> so I took a lot of courage to try and do that. And then um, finally when we got to Cooper, I didn't consciously think about what he might be like 25 years later. I just said, I'm different, he'll be different. So, and I just went into it with the same kind of personality, I guess, as I had with the first guy. So, uh, and that and it came out as it came out. So, it was sort of an interesting process. And then there were some little other little fun pieces along the way. The f um, fat buddy was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> just to be able to pat your belly like that was really fun. I enjoyed that. It was good. So. Thank you. And I uh, cannot say the incredible performance without uh, Cheryl, especially, let's specifically point out, when, when, on the evening Maddie was killed, and on network TV, that scene, which had to be the scariest scene ever had on network TV, uh, that day, I know, was not a happy day. David, from what I'm told, is filled with the, the love and the family that he brings to the set. Is that vital, especially on a day like that where you have to scream all day, you have to go through this all day. From what I understand, there were three different ways of shooting that scene, three different killers, to kind of throw off any spoilers that may happen. Uh, getting through that, how did David, the feel of David that he brings to the set, like, did that, the mental place, how easy is that and how hard is that to shut off? When you I was really tired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, the, those days just, they take a lot of focus because it has to be really choreographed and I was working with great actors. So um, I was in good hands and you know, you, you just know those days are what they are and you, you do them and you focus on what the stunt people tell you to do. You be safe and you take the emotional journey and Trust the people that you're working with. Yeah, she was. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she is. <laughs> no, she was actually. Uh, she was killed by three different people that day. <laughs> by me, Leland, by uh, Ben Horn, and by Bob Frank Silva. Because. Uh, David didn't want even the crew to know who the real killer of Laura Palmer was. And so she, she had to go through having her face smashed into the wall by three different people. And, uh, and it was, I remember it was a long day, 12, 14 hours.
And, you know, we all needed a massage afterwards, you know, and uh, <laughs> go wind down. But, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite an experience. I have a follow-up question. <laughs> I, so did you know who... So you just had to give it everything for all oh. three versions? Oh, that day? I did know... Did, was it the day before that we found out? It was only like the day before, right? I think it was yeah, only yeah, the, it was the, the, the day before, yeah. So it was, was right, hard for It was right after the Emmys, in? in which we didn't win any. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, I remember. We won a technical one, but we, we were up for 14 Emmys, and we didn't win it. L.A. Law was the big show that year. And where is that now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. The day before, I got I, I got a message from uh, that David wanted to see me up in this room in our in our production facility, and I came into the room and it was rather dark. I, th I think there was a lava lamp in the corner, <laughs> and, and and David and Mark were sitting cross-legged on the floor, and Richard Beamer and myself and Shigirl, we all came in and we all got down the floor, cross-legged, and, and David looked at me and he reached out and touched my knee and he said, Ray, it's you, it's always been you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Mazzy, 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 Mazzy,
Like, is it safe? <laughs> is it stupid? 
right? All these different things. And then it's become really connecting and looking at people's eyes and sharing on a deep level. And people have given me their perspective of what what touched them and how what it meant to them. And you can't ask for more than that as an actor. You know, that's what you do is to tell stories. So God bless all of you. We love all of you. show, never mind the greatest show that's ever been. And between the cast and the fans, you guys have been so welcoming. You're brainiacs, you're genius, you're beautiful, you're fun, you're just everything an actor could hope for. So thank you. Thank you all for doing this. I'm a huge fan of the show and I have so many questions and the only thing that comes to mind is no means got heat. So I wanted to ask Mr. Walton, when you were shooting Showgirls, was there a point where you thought, I might not get an Oscar? That wasn't me. That wasn't me. I didn't know who it was, but it wasn't me. Well, that was a fun adventure. It was a detour. something and David wants something different than what you're doing and he 
has to talk to you and direct you into what his vision is, what makes him unique in that. He doesn't really talk much. <laughs> um, I mean, I've got to say, with David, um, from the beginning, the script is a pretty good blueprint uh, for all of the characters to follow. I don't think anyone... Uh, it's pretty clear on what, what, what's going on, and then I think I just trust, and I think we all do, that David uh, sees in us what he wants. It's already there. So we just have to just kind of be who we are. Like you said, you show up and you're yourself, you know, and uh, uh, given the circumstances that you go through, of course, those change things. But David has always been, if, if anything, um, a less is more kind of a director for me. Um, I've spoken a little bit about some of the terminology that he shares with me uh, from time to time to encourage a certain difference and he will on times, although he doesn't do it that much anymore, say it needs more mystery like sometimes or more Elvis. <laughs> sometimes that's one of my favorites actually. Um, and uh, or it needs, and then it's always with the hand gesture, a little wind, it needs some wind, you know. <laughs> okay, all right. So I just absorb that and, uh, and it changes the next take. Uh, and I'm not really sure how or why, but he always seems to be pleased, so. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> Before we go to the next question, I do want to say that uh, we do have time for a few more questions, but fear not because we are around, we're in booths, please come meet them and say hello and you can ask more questions if you'd like, but we just have to kind of get, get ready to wrap things up, so go ahead. Hey there, thank you all so much for being here, this is so cool. Uh, I was telling Cyril Lee yesterday that I'm a school counselor for 10th grade, and I, for Halloween I have a Twin Peaks display in my office. And so one of my students comes in, she's like, why do you have all these owls? Why is there a log in there? <laughs> and then she sees where it says Twin Peaks, and she's like, Twin Peaks? I thought that was a restaurant. <laughs> so I was curious if y'all, any of y'all have ever ate at the Twin Peaks. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Has anybody uh, had the Twin Peaks restaurant? No. Apparently there's a Twin Peaks. No, I've seen them online. It's not licensed, it's not official, but it is a no. Twin Peaks sports bar. <laughs> stigma in Hollywood and showing 
um, somebody's real experience that's, that's diverse and beautiful and complicated. And so please watch out for it. <laughs> Similar to that, not really. Uh, I did a film over a decade ago, and it's possibly the worst thing you have ever seen in your life. We shot it in Egypt, I was kidnapped at one point for four hours, and everything went wrong. And we thought it was buried forever, but the director has somehow clawed it back, and he's remixed it. Um, and against all of our teams trying to squash it, they are going to release it in Toronto. So uh, watch out for that. And you can count how many times parts of my costume just dissolve. And by the end of the movie, I think I'm really tanned and blonde hair and at the start of a redhead, really white skin. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you very much.